Are hiking poles best for helping you walk? Many people have trouble with their walking. They might be walking with their feet too wide apart, they might be shuffling, or worse, they might be stumbling and falling occasionally. My name is Doug. I've been a physical therapist for 30 years, and so many times I've been asked the question, are hiking poles better than walkers or canes? In this video, I'm going to explain to you what hiking poles are, and then I'm going to compare them to walkers and canes to hopefully answer the question of what's best for you. First of all, let's talk about what a hiking pole is. Hiking poles or hiking sticks, sometimes they're called trekking poles, are basically two sticks with a hand strap. You put them on each hand, and as you walk, you use the hiking poles to steady yourself. The way to correctly use them is every time you move your left leg, the hiking pole in your right hand should be in contact with the ground. And then every time you move your left leg, the hiking pole in the right hand should be in contact with the ground. So you're going to reciprocally walk right leg, left leg, and every time one leg is down on the ground, the hiking pole in the opposite hand is also on the ground. What that gives you is basically four points of contact with the ground. So not only is your foot on the ground balancing you, but so is the hiking pole with each foot. Now compare that to a cane. A cane is just used in one hand. So if the cane is in your right hand, every time you move your left leg, the cane is going to be on the ground when the left leg is on the ground. So as you walk, you basically have three points of contact. You have the cane in the right hand and your left leg on the ground. And then when you bring your right leg forward, you just have your right leg on the ground. Now, the last thing to think about is a walker. Now, a walker is unique in that there's four points of contact on the walker plus your two feet. So technically, at certain points in your walking, you actually have six things on the ground. And that's why the walker provides the most stability. When you're using a walker, if it has two wheels, which is the most common kind, you're going to be pushing it forward and then advancing each leg. So at any given moment, you always have the four legs of the walker in contact with the ground, and you have at least one or both of your feet in contact with the ground. So it's very stable. The first way to judge these different devices is by looking at how they affect the normal gait cycle. Normally when you walk, you're standing up straight, your right leg is coming forward, you're standing on your right leg, then you're bringing your left leg forward and standing on your left leg, your arms are swinging. So when you look at using trekking poles or hiking poles, they actually allow you to stand up straight, which is good, and they allow you to swing both arms equally. The poles actually act like extensions of your arm, so it improves your arm swing, which does improve your balance. The other thing is, it promotes a long step length. When you use hiking poles, partly because of the arm swinging, but also just because you feel more stable, you're going to take a longer step length. And that actually makes your balance better. It also helps you get from point A to point B faster. Walking faster is not necessarily something that causes more falls if you're using something like a trekking pole to stabilize yourself. The other thing is, it's providing a lot of stability, but not interrupting your gait cycle. Now compare this to a cane. A cane also allows you to stand up straight, because when you use a cane, you really can't lean on it very much. You might be leaning on it slightly, but it really doesn't change your posture that much. Also, when you use a cane on the right, in the right hand, it's helping your left leg have a longer swing and a more stable swing. So using a cane is good because it helps you swing more on that one side. The problem with a cane is because it's not on the other side, you might end up taking a shorter step length with the leg that the cane is in because you don't have a cane on the other side. So it actually kind of makes you have sort of an uneven gait cycle and it can make you lean more to one side than the other. So a cane is definitely good but it's not as good as the trekking poles when it comes to the gait cycle. Now let's look at a walker. When you use a walker, 
most people are leaning forward. Just like when you walk with a shopping cart, you're gonna lean on it slightly. When you use a walker, your tendency is gonna be leaning forward. So that's a problem because it changes the normal way that you walk. When you walk leaning forward, you actually have to use different muscles. You have to lift your legs a little bit higher. There's a big change in your normal gait cycle. So using a walker doesn't allow you to walk um, with a normal gait cycle, the same way walking with trekking poles does or walking with a cane. Now, let's look at another criteria, which is how stable you are. Now, if you look at uh, trekking poles, like I said, you're always gonna have one trekking pole and one foot on the ground when you're walking. And there's times when you're walking, you're gonna actually have all four things on the ground, the two trekking poles and your feet. And if you lose your balance, you have two poles that you can put out to stabilize yourself. So it does help you stabilize yourself in the event of a fall. And while you're walking, it provides quite a bit of stability. Now compare trekking poles to a cane. A cane definitely provides more stability when you're walking because you have three points of contact versus just two when you're walking without a cane. So if you lose your balance, you do have something that you can bring out to the side and put some weight onto to stabilize yourself, but it's not as good as trekking poles. Now look at a walker. A walker has four things in contact with the ground plus your two feet. It is by far the most stable device. If you're walking behind a walker and you lose your balance, you're much less likely to fall with a walker than with trekking poles or a cane. The last factor, and the one that's probably most often overlooked, is embarrassment. A lot of people don't want to use a walker or cane, even though they need to, even though they would fall less with it, because they're embarrassed. They don't want to be seen out of their house with a walker or a cane. They feel it makes them look old or disabled or handicapped. Well, the problem is, if you need a walker or a cane to safely walk, this is a big problem. And I can tell you from experience that people accept hiking poles much more readily than they do walkers or canes. Hiking poles look cooler. They look like someone's about to go for a hike or that they're very active. When you see someone with hiking poles, you don't immediately associate that with injury or disability. So for that reason, hiking poles are much more favorable for a lot of people because of compliance. Will you use it is a big question. So if you'll use the hiking poles more because you don't feel like it makes you look handicapped, then I would say use hiking poles. I'm gonna summarize this video by saying, for different people, different assistive devices are gonna be great. You really wanna use the assistive device that provides the least amount of assistance but still allows you to walk independently. Your goal is walking independently. So if you need a lot of assistance or you feel that you're about to fall all the time, I highly recommend a walker with two wheels. If you're definitely having just a little bit of stability problems every so often, but it's not a constant thing, then a cane might work great for you. Also, you could just use one hiking pole if you feel embarrassed to use a cane. It definitely looks better. But if, you're, if you need more stability than just one cane can provide, but you don't feel like you need to use a walker, two hiking poles can be a great way to go. It can allow you to be stable and be mobile and be less embarrassed. And it's something that a lot of people are compliant with. And I highly recommend it. So the bottom line is there is no one right assisted device for everybody, but it just depends on your condition, your disability, how good your balance is, and how embarrassed you are. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you wanna see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel.